So you thought that painting the ash waste terrain just by using washers was easy. Wait till you see this tutorial of how we quickly painted up our ash waste nomads and their dust bag helamites. So I know why you guys are here. You guys are all Necromanda fans. And as we know, Necromanda is a skirmish game released by Games Workshop. I know it's a little bit niche, but that's why you guys are here and that's what this video is for. We all know that I love a skirmish game, but you know what beats that? Playing a game fully painted. And I'm going to show you how. So let's get all these paints ready. Wow. And let's get ready to quickly and very easily paint up our dustbag helamites right now. Of course, we're going to be using our first contrast paint, which is Wildwood. Wildwood creates this very dark brown, which is quite desaturated, very close to black, which is why I chose this color. And surprisingly, Wildwood is actually quite translucent, so you can use it pretty liberally. So next up, we're going to be using Black Templar contrast paint. Whoa, what's going on here? This looks very different from the Games Workshop box art and we know that I like copying the box art. But wait a second, this colour scheme right here is heavily inspired by the Goliath beetle that exists in real life. So before you start painting up your dust bag helamites, why not go on the internet, search up some crazy references and let's bring them to life in the Warhammer 40k universe. Whoa, so we're going to be tackling the carapace on the dust bag helamite. So as mentioned, the colour scheme of this dust bag helamite is inspired by the Goliath beetle. What you can see on the Goliath beetle is, on the extremities of this carapace, it has more off-white and gradually it moves to having more black with white dots in the middle. And that's exactly what I'm doing right here. See that? Remember guys, references are key to painting realistic looking organic surfaces. So next up, I'm going to be establishing a little bit of mid-tone using green brown. So at this point of time, I'm just referencing the picture that I got from the internet of how a Goliath beetle is looking, trying to get the extremities a little bit more white while keeping the middle more black and just keeping the dots in. Moving on, I'm going to be mixing in a little bit of grimy grey into the mix. Why I chose to do this mix is because grimy grey is a little bit too high value in my opinion and you really need to tone it down a little bit. So just by mixing in a little bit of green brown, this actually ties everything together very nicely. And remember, always look at your reference to make sure that the patterns are correct. Next up, I'm going to be using pure grimy grey here just to do a little bit of edge highlighting. For this edge highlighting stage, you just want to pick on some of the carapace that might be scratched or damaged so that you can use this stage to showcase some of the sculpted details. Well, hello there. So now we are going to be moving on to paint the black carapace on this dust bag helamite. As with the Goliath beetle, it has black legs, and the favorite color that I like to use when painting black is this color called lead gray. It's this bluish, desaturated, dark gray that comes from the AK range. It really helps develop this cool mid tone color that is very convincing as black rather than just having grays on it. So if you want to paint up a more convincing black armor, why not check out the Black Templar video that I produced a couple of months ago but I guess it's still relevant. Links will be in the description below. Remember when painting black, the most important thing is not to overdo the mid-tone. I see many beginner painters tend to paint a very large portion of this in this lead grey colour. However, you should always keep it to about 30%. Adding in a little bit of this violet color to tie everything together, I'm gonna be creating the highest highlights here. As part of the time, you just wanna make sure that you wanna keep this very, very sparingly and don't do this all over the model. So right here, I'm gonna make this design look a little bit more organic to let some of the patches flow on to the black carapace. Using a bit of green brown and grimy gray, I'm going to be painting in some spots and at these spots you want to make sure that the spots are bigger near the carapace and smaller towards the extremity. Just do this as carefully as you can. 
Wait, 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 wait. What are we doing here? We're going to be painting the compound eyes, but Games Workshop didn't sculpt anything. It's kind of easy. Just paint big red dots and highlight them individually as if they were sculpted in. This results in a very realistic looking compound eye effect, and I think it really sells the effect that this is a real life animal. So now here, I'm going to be using pure carmine, and I'm going to be individually painting the red dots. What's important here is you want to make sure that the red dots stand independently and not touch each other. So you've got to do this stage really carefully and if you have to go back to using black paint to clean up, always do that. It's going to be worth it. So next up, I'm going to be using a little bit of pastel violet here. This pastel violet is going to be used to tie everything together similarly with the black carapace. I'm going to be only highlighting on the spot that is exposed to the light. Well, how fun was that? That was the dust bag Helamite, and next, we are going to be moving on to the Ash Waste Nomads. But here's the catch. I'm going to be using contrast paints to establish the base colors, and I'm going to throw a wash on top of that. Here's one thing. I'm going to try to retain the color from the contrast paint while keeping the washes in the shadows. That's why I'm going to be using a technique to clean off the upper surfaces while leaving the shade in the recesses. Curious to find out more? Let's watch how this is done. So right here, we're going to be using contrast to establish the base colors. I'm going to be using Plague Barrel Flash. Plague Barrel Flash is honestly one of my favorite colors because it is very translucent, allows me to build in many layers, and it produces a very great sickly skin looking result. However, in this case, we're going to be producing this old worn out raincoat color. As part of time, I'm going to be using Dark Wolf Flash to create some of the darker ladders on the rider and maybe just paint in his exposed skin just a little bit there. Next up, I'm going to be using a little bit of Fugan Orange. This Fugan Orange is going to be locked on pretty liberally. Don't worry if it takes away the green because the magic is going to happen soon. So right here, this is the step that I've been describing. Remember to keep the brush slightly moist and do this while the shade is still wet. Clean off the upper surfaces while leaving a little bit of orange in the shadows. Doesn't it look so much better after it's being cleaned up? This is the magic that you can do if you plan beforehand. So next up, I'm going to be using a little bit of olive green and a little bit of grimy grey to create the next highlight. This creates a very desaturated warm green and I'm going to be placing these highlights on the rider. I'm doing it in a very scratchy manner so that when I paint on the model, it produces this very rough texture to illustrate that this raincoat looking light covering has been through a lot of different weathering. Next up, I'm going to be adding in a little bit more grimy grey and this is going to be for the extreme highlight. Notice that grimy grey is a common colour that I've used for all the highlights because I want to make sure that the entire piece is congruent and not one segment is excessively highlighted. Next up, I'm going to be using a little bit of natural steel brushed over this area that I've contrast coloured in wildwood. I find that this is a very useful way of how you can paint up weathered looking metal very quickly and very easily. Because the contrast paint has already created the definitions and this metallic paint only serves as a glaze to tell the audience that this is a metallic surface. For the casings, I'm going to be using Black Templar right here. This Black Templar plane just covers over the metal color that we have dry brushed previously so well that you didn't even know that we would have dry brushed that previously. And lastly, to create a little bit of copper color, I'm going to be using a little bit of fugan orange right here. This fugan orange, you just want to do it liberally, just like contrast paint, and you can tint the metal areas and make it look just like copper because there is a little bit of metallic colors underneath. And there we have it. This is the completed Dustback Helamite and his Ash Race Nomad Rider. I really like how the carapace turned out because it looks super realistic and the Ash Race Nomads look super cool and weathered with his sort of desert raincoat colors. So that's how I very quickly and efficiently painted up my Dustback Helamites with their Ash Race Nomad Riders. 
you must be interested in Necromanda. That's why you're here, right? Why not click this video right here where I painted up the entire Necromanda terrain only using washes?